Hi guys, so today we're going to be talking about Miriam's Abba's uh, So Long a Letter. Let me get this up. PowerPoint up. So here we go. So a little bit about Mariam Abba. She was born in Dakar, Senegal in 1929 and she was raised by her Muslim grandmother after her mother's, mother's death. So that kind of that's kind of where her uh, Muslim customs and traditions come from in the book. Uh, she graduated college in 1947 and became a school teacher. Uh, she's known as the pioneer of Senegalese literature and used so long a letter to express feelings about culture and societal issues in her country because she wanted another platform besides teaching and education to um, talk about those issues. Uh, the story or the letter is set in Dakar, Senegal around the 1970s, and it's coming from the point of view uh, from, by a woman, Senegal woman named uh, Ramatula. And it's during the time where uh, Senegal, well, Dakar is transitioning from colonization to more of a modern independent nation. So we're gonna start with the summary. Um, the story or the letter starts with Ramatula writing a letter to her friend, Asuta, I believe, who we find out now lives in the U.S. Ramatula tells Asuta about the death of her estranged husband, Made, 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 I think. <laughs> she finds herself working his funeral despite the fact that he left her and her 12 children for Benute, Benute, I think I'm saying this right. I apologize if I'm messing up names. <laughs> Ramatula then goes on to reflect over her marriage with Madhu. She discusses the betrayal that she feels due to the fact that she gave him 12 children in 30 years of her life. life. She reflects over her mother's warning about Madhu and how he was too perfect for her. Uh, Ramatula then brings up how her and Asuta are now in similar situations, seeing that the reason Asuta being in the U.S. was due to her ex-husband Madhu. Maudu taking a second wife, Nabe. Sorry. <laughs> the second marriage happens because Madhu's mother never wanted her son to marry outside of royal blood, and Asuta is the daughter of a goldsmith, which is not royal blood. This causes Asuta to divorce Madhu, which differs from Ramatula, who decides to stay with her polygamous husband, despite her beliefs against it. The story then jumps back to Ramatula telling her story about her how her marriage fell apart. She talks about her, how her husband's new wife started out as her daughter, her daughter, Debay's friend involved with a sugar daddy, whom they come to soon find out that it happens to be Madei. Once the two marry, Ramatula is left alone to raise her children on her own. Ramatula learns how to be independent and focuses all her attention on raising her children while she's in this isolation loneliness period. She even rejects two suitors who ask for her hand in marriage after the death of her husband. The story then shifts to Ramatula's adaptation to the new modern ideals, including her children partaking in smoking and her daughter becoming preg pregnant at a wedlock. The story slash letter ends with Ramatula expressing her joy about Asuta's return and how things that they have gone through have made them stronger as friends. So some of the themes that I noticed in the story, uh, one thing that jumped out to me was the different uh, marriage views between men and women, and then uh, more of a traditional and modern view. I'm not gonna read uh, all the quotes because they're here so you can read them for yourself, but uh, how women and men differ in the book. Women view marriage as more of an act of uh, love and uh, being able to choose who you love and being with that person and men view it more as a, um, here's a woman, she's gonna please my sexual desires, and once she's done pleasing my sexual desires, I wanna find something much younger, uh, that looks good, uh, that I can add to our relationship. Uh, the traditional view we see in the book is uh, women are viewed as um, servants in a way, and are domesticated and put into the house. Uh, as you can see in the quote, Senegal women are forced to give up their personality, their dignity, and their main job is to serve their husband. And not only their husband, but their husband's family, entire family, including their the husband's mother, husband's father, et cetera, you get the point. 
uh, the modern view, which we see comes from uh, Ramatula's daughter and her husband, uh, the husband views the woman more as a, a wife instead of a slave or a servant. And her daughter, Dubai, views marriage as more of, more as, views it more of, I'm so sorry, as an option rather than a binding agreement. As you can see in the quote, she feels that if you're not satisfied in a marriage, then you should be able to break apart. Uh, and that's kind of the different views in mar about marriage in the book. Um, another thing that I saw was the oppression of women. Um, when a lot of the women in the book are viewed as less than men or not equal, but that's kind of obvious seeing that it's around the 1970s. So women have rights, but aren't as equal to men during this time. So for instance, um, we see the first quote actually comes from a woman, uh, Aunt Nabay, I, I believe it's on page 30, but she says to tell the truth, a woman does not need too much education. And that just goes to show how they thought women didn't really need education, their place was in the home. And then the other quotes kind of just back that up, uh, the different points about oppression of women. So another thing that I noticed that was kind of small, but I thought it was good to point out is the theme of karma and how the universe takes care of those who have wronged us. Uh, we first see this on page 61, where uh, Ramatula declines the marriage of um, Tamsir, I think that's his name, I think that's how you pronounce it, with the same people around who uh, also, in the beginning of the book, brought her the news that her husband was to uh, be married to another woman. We also see the theme of karma uh, when her daughter, Dubai, tells her father's mother that she can't stay anymore. And the quote says, remember, I was your daughter's best friend. You made her my mother's rival. Remember, for five years, you deprived my mother and her 12 children of their breadwinner. Remember, my mother suffered a great deal. How can a woman sap the happiness of another? You deserve no pity. Pack up. And that's just kind of the theme of karma. The last thing that uh, I think plays a big role in, in the entire book is the maternal relationship that Ramatula has with all of her children. Uh, throughout the book, we see that she makes it a point to make sure that all of her 12 children are taken care of despite her situation, because she could just abandon them considering that she's uh, been abandoned by her husband, she's in this whole estate, but she still makes it a point to make sure all of her children are taken care of. And I just wanna read this last quote. Um, and also, one is a mother in order to understand the inexplicable. One is a mother to lighten the darkness. One is a mother to shield when lightning strikes the night, when thunder, th <laughs> when thunder shakes the earth, when mud bogs one down. One is a mo mother in order to love without being or end. And that quote really just spoke to me because it showed that uh, Ramatula would go to any means necessary to ensure that her children uh, were taken care of um, if they were in a situation that could potentially hurt them, that she would take care of them. So the current interpretation that I found was an article that really highlighted um, Mariam Abu Abe's <laughs> criticism of polygamy, and if the practice was more of a more of a cultural purpose or more for sexual desires. And this in the novel uh, between Ramatula's marriage and Asuta's marriage, uh, both of their husbands end up practicing polygamy, but instead of what it's intended for, which the article explains uh, was intended for agriculture or, or um, gaining uh, a higher status for your family, the two men instead of going for an older woman, go for younger women who are more fertile, uh, who are younger and can please them better than older women. We also see that the article um, discusses how uh, Miriam points out the effects of caste systems on marriage. So this last quote says, for instance, through Asuta's failed marriage to Mah Madhu Abba in so long a letter, 
Ba explores the caste system and shows how Senegal and other countries of the Sahal region of sub of sub-Saharan Africa follow it to justify polygamy. Asuta is the victim of her mother-in-law's strong caste prejudice. Because Asuta was the daughter of a goldsmith, um, Madhu's mother didn't feel as if she was good enough. And so we see that she's cast aside and abandoned by her husband for someone who's um, of royal blood. And here are my sources and thank you guys. I hope I didn't ramble too much. See ya.